Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Those of you that are logging on, wherever you are in the universe, welcome. We'll get to you in just a moment. Those of you that are here, up and in is always better. <laughs> I believe the air conditioner will kick on shortly. It's because when that door keeps opening, we lose a lot of... Well, it's never cool enough, so <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> bring, bring, there you, bring a sweater, bring, we'll get some of those prayer cloths from the church. <laughs> we got enough of those to cover you up. <laughs> Everybody doing well? We'll get started in a few minutes, but let's uh, come on in and find your place. We've had an excellent weekend already. I hope you have. So glad it's a beautiful sunny day. Um, it can rain. Hey, Jeff. It can rain tomorrow if it wants to, but I like on Sunday when it's nice and sunny. That's my personal preference. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and stand and... Um, while the rest of the people are coming in, if you don't know who you're sitting next to or in front of or behind, would you go ahead and say hello? Scripture says if you want friends to show yourself friendly. Are there three? Let me hear the name of somebody you just met. One, two, three. Right. We know all these people. We already met them. <laughs> uh, we had um, a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, I'll say a little bit more about it later when I introduce uh, Jacob to you. But uh, we did. We rented Tapa Tapa next door to do. Uh, to we. The idea was, let's get as many in the now Jim Swillies in the can that we can. That's the podcast that we do. And uh, when we did them before, we d it took us two days, and um, we got 13 episodes. Yesterday, we, there was such an energy and a flow in there. We already had, I think, nine, nine or ten of them done by 3 o'clock. And um, I learned a couple of things. Like before, we would break for lunch, and when you break for lunch, you kind of lose the energy because what happens is everybody sits and they talk to each other and then you put them back on the camera and they, they're talked out. So yesterday, anybody that was talking in between stuff, I was like, shut up, shut up, save it, save it, don't talk, don't talk to each other, wait. Like a lot of these uh, talk show hosts won't m even speak to their guests before the actual interview because uh, it, it comes across better, come on up, Rhonda, uh, it comes across better and fresh and um, that's why we had... Uh, Jacob came down, and Tony, and Wayne were part, and Lana, and um, uh, Alicia. Who else that's here today was part of that yesterday? Uh, some of you remember Dr. Ralph Martin. He, was, uh, he got, got to be with us, and uh, the inimitable Robert Rutherford was there in all of his, in all of his Rutherfordness. Oh, Jeremy uh, uh, Lopez came over from Alabama. Um, Oh, John Brumlow, some of you guys remember him from Church of the Now, had him, and um, Judah came in for a couple of the, uh, I think that was everybody. Uh, if, if I may say one more thing about it, Alicia really was extraordinary, and she's in a PhD program, and uh, when I have talked about things psychological or about communication or about, uh, in the past she would say, she would verify things that I would say by what you were teaching about is what we discussed, whatever. So I said, you know, next time I do a, a, a season of um, In the Now, i got to have you on there. So we were very theological yesterday, and, and she brought it. Like everything we would bring up, she would, she would confirm it, you know. Like you say, what do you think about that, Alicia? And she always begins with so. She's like, so. And then she's saying these words, like, well, the cognitive dissonance. Of the blah, blah. And we're all like, humming, humming, humming. Like, what's she talking about? <laughs> You're real smart. Um, <laughs> but it was really good because, you know, the scripture says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word's established. And so when, when you're talking about spiritual things and then somebody comes in and confirms what you're saying 
from the scientific paradigm and gives it a language, then it just is even that much more validated. So it was, it was excellent. Everybody, everybody just did a great job. I couldn't have, I couldn't have been happier with it. And I'm just amazed that we were as productive as we were. And so I know um, today is going to take it to a whole other level. Uh, th there's something very special, uh, very synchronistic about this weekend. Everybody that's here is here because they're supposed to be. Uh, I'm sure. He, Jacob will say something about his friend Griff, but many of you know uh, the amazing comedian Griff, who is a, a bona fide celebrity. He's with us here uh, today. Yeah, don't act, don't act like you don't know I'm talking about you. And uh, he uh, took some time off from his own church and his own uh, schedule to be here with us today, so that's, that's good. Every time you have somebody new, when somebody else comes in, they bring another part of the energy and, and it's it's always interesting to me how the the thing works out you know like whoever is here brings something the people who come here are like we, we talked about this in one of the episodes yesterday uh, I have nothing against worship at all I, you know I've spent my life as a worshiper but there was a time that we had to do like 45 minutes of worship to get everybody ready for the word you know that was the thing like we say we had to plow it out for the word well we're kind of past that now like like worship is a lifestyle and by the time we get here we're like yeah if you bring in a singer and we'll sing along with them whatever but we're ready to go you don't have to you don't have to do you know what I mean it's like right you don't have to romance us we're you know we're in the mood if I may you know like <laughs> so um so anyway, uh, I just decree that we're all in agreement. We set our intention uh, that something extraordinary is going to happen today. Uh, where two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into that house, that sanctuary, that, that community, that gathering of people, whether it's in a church building or a theater or out in the park or in the woods, where, wherever it is, it's people coming together with a common intentionality. He said it would produce the presence of Christ. He says, there I am, there the I am exists in the midst of that. I love you, but I also need you. There's something I can't receive without you. I don't, it's mysterious. I don't understand it. But I have to have you in my life because I can't get it by myself. It's unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. That it, the revelation always comes through in us, never in me, never in you. So you've got to have us. And y'all know y'all got to have me. Because ain't no sunshine when I'm gone, Jesus. So uh, we speak a blessing over this day. Please remain standing. Let's run that, and then I'll introduce Marshall to you. Good morning, and welcome to Metron. Metron is measure or sphere of influence, and we want to help you find your Metron through motivation, enlightenment, transcendence, renewal, outreach, and networking. Today is your day to find your Metron. Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour. <laughs> So glad that you are here. This is the day that the Lord not only has made, but has empowered us to make. The Elohim said, let us make people in our image and let, let us give them the ability to create their day. And that's what we're doing now. Uh, I've enjoyed every part of this month and uh, a huge part of the enjoyment has been because of uh, our guest artist for this month. Um, I'll say something about him in a moment. I do want to say that I've already scheduled uh, Sammy Blue for next month. Some of you remember Sammy Blue. Uh, he's a, he was a protege of B.B. King and worked with B.B. King a lot and sounds a lot like him. He reminds you a lot of him. And uh, he's able to work out time in his schedule to be here and very excited about it. Um, but uh, I loved Marshall, the, f the first note that came out of his mouth. I just loved him. And uh, every Sunday since then, um, I have grown to love him more. Uh, this will not be the last time he is with us. Uh, I've had lots of people say to me, you, you just ought to have him. Ever. You just go ahead and lock him in for the rest of the year. And I'm like, well, you know, he's, he has a gig. I mean, he has to take time out of where he usually is on Sundays to be with us. But um, 
I don't believe it was accidental that we met him. Uh, I feel like whether whether he's our artist of the month or not, I feel like he and Corey are a part of us, and uh, I, I, I think you all feel that way, and I believe they feel that way. So um, it's the last time this month that we'll have him, but it will not be the last time that we have him at Metron. Uh, once again, would you welcome the awesome Marshall Ruffin. Marshall! told me to sing this, so I'm going to do it so she doesn't get angry at me. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything is all right. Said shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door. Keep out the devil, light the candle, everything is all right. Said when I was a little baby boy, shut the door. Keep out the devil, where the good and bad was just a game. Then I said, shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Many years and many trials, shut the door. Keep out the devil, where they proved to me they're not the same. I said, shut the Door, keep the devil in the night. Said, shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. Keep the devil in the night. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Well, light the candle. Everything is all right. Said, shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. Keep the devil in the night. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Well. Light the candle, everything is all right. Well, oh, Mr. Satan, he's an evil charmer. Shut the door, you keep out the devil, and he's hungry for your soul to hurt. And I said, shut the door, keep the devil in the night. And without your holy armor, shut the door, keep out the devil. Well, you know he's going to eat you for dessert. I said, shut the door, keep the devil in the night. I said, shut the door. Keep out the devil, shut the door. Keep the devil in the night, shut the door. Keep out the devil, well, light the candle, everything is all right. So shut the door, or keep out the devil. I said, light the candle, everything is all right. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything is all right. I said, light the candle. Say, light the candle, 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 light the candle. And I said, light the candle, everything is all right. Light the candle, everything is all right. Light the candle, everything is all right. I said, light the candle, everything is all right. Well, my mama, she used to sing this song. Shut the door and keep out the devil. And my papa used to sing it too. I said, shut the door. And keep the devil in the night. Oh, but the good Lord is taking them over yonder. Shut the door and keep out the devil. So I sing my song to you. Well, I said, shut the door and keep the devil in the Shut the door, keep the devil 
in the night I shut the door. Keep out the devil, light the candle, everything is all right since shut the door. Keep out the devil, shut the door. Keep the devil in the night, shut the door. Keep out the devil, well, light the candle, everything is all right. Light the candle, everything is all right. Light the candle, everything is all right. I said, light the candle, everything is all right. Okay, another brand new song. Corey's been, Corey's been giving me all these great suggestions. So this is another one of hers ideas.
to grace how great a better how daily I'm constrained to be so let thy grace now Thy banner, my wandering heart to be. Yeah, that's a good song. Good job, Corey. <laughs> okay, uh, I really enjoyed being here this month, much as I did in March. And uh, yeah, I'll be back. Um, I played this tune last month. Uh, I wrote this song, so here it goes. Thanks for having me. He's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I know he's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I said he's gonna light the way to heaven forever. Well, Well, Satan is the deceiver, and he'll catch you in the dark, lead you down to the river, fall and drown your holy spark. But if you look, look into the shadow, and you see a golden light, you better know it is your Savior. And coming for to lead you through the night. I said, He's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I said, He's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I said, He's gonna light the way to heaven forever. Well, good Lord, good Lord, good Lord, good Lord, he's gonna light the way to hell. 
heaven for me. Some good clapping. Well, if you're in the valley of the shadow of death And you feel the devil creeping at your back with eyes and breath Just look, look up to the mountain There for a lantern in hand No Gonna lead you to the promised land. I said he's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I said he's gonna light the way to heaven forever. I said he's gonna light the way to heaven forever. Well, good Lord, good Lord, good Lord, good Lord. Well, he's gonna light the way to heaven. Don't finish that song yet. Hold that chord. Will you trust me on something? Go back to your, uh, go back to your bridge where you're playing the guitar a little bit. Would you just come here? Just would you just come here a minute? Yes, you, Chandra, come here just a second. Just come here a second. Just, I just want to try something. Will you trust me on this? All right. I know you don't know this song. You don't have to know this song. Just, just try a few bars of a little something. Let's just see what happens. That's all I'm saying. So if you just want to kind of give it a lead in, and that's all I'm saying. What's the word? What's the word? Oh, light the way, light the way to heaven. Oh, light, light, light the way to heaven. I want to walk, I want to walk with you, Lord, yeah. So light the way to heaven oh, oh, oh walk i said to walk i gotta walk my way to heaven lord light light my way light my way to heaven i'm gonna sit i'm gonna sit Oh, hey, with my father, yes, cause he's gonna like my way to heaven. Yeah, bum 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 only you who can like my way to heaven. I wanna, I wanna be with you. 
Yeah, yeah, I want, I want a light. Oh, I want a light to heaven. Oh, Lord, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. Show me, show me, show me, show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said a light. We need a light, Lord. We need a light. Oh, see the way, yeah, I want to see the way to heaven. Oh, I need, I need your hand, Lord. Sometimes I need a word, oh, Lord, to help me see. Watch and see what I need. I'm calling, Lord. Calling you, cause you're mighty. Yes, you are. Show me a light. Show me a light. Show me a light. Show me the way. Got a journey. I need a light for my journey. I need a light. Show me, Lord, what to do, what to think. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I need a light, hallelujah, I need a light, hallelujah, I need a light, oh Lord, show me the way to heaven, yes, told me today, oh I don't worry, cause I got you, I know in my heart, oh Lord, you never leave me. No, 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 you give me light, you give me strength, you give me hope, you give me joy. It's in the light, oh, it's in the light to have. Shonda Corelli, Marshall Ruffin, yes. <laughs> now you can't do that with everybody. They've never met each other. She's never heard that song. And I'm like, just, it'll work. Just trust me. Just, just, it'll work. And it did. Once again, that was awesome. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Whew. Just remain standing. I would have, I would have gotten Paul Ed in on some of that, but we, we'd have been here. I, Jake would have never had any time. Once I get, once I get her going, then we're like, then revival breaks out and the glory cloud comes in. I'm like, we, we got to stay on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was great. Um, before I introduce our guest, just so you know, uh, our outreach of the month was the orphans in Haiti. They have already been uh, fed. The check's already been sent. Because of your giving, we were able to rent the facility yesterday, buy extra equipment, uh, take care of uh, extra expenses, and so that, that's great. We are living in abundance, and I appreciate yeah those those people, and we'll we'll support them again, but. Uh, and I'm not sure what our outreach is going to be next month, but I, I just I just wait for spirit to really drop that in my heart. Like, where's where's the energy? And and uh, we've so far we've batted a thousand. Every place we've chosen has been exactly right place at the right time. Uh, you know, I don't really do church anymore. I don't. Uh, I, I believe church is when two or more gather together. By the way, I mentioned people that came yesterday. Eddie Sellers was also a part of us yesterday, and I forgot to mention him. But um, uh, you know, I remember there in the days of mega church, everybody, you know, wanted a gig and people would call me all the time. I, I mean, there's no way to tell you the guys that don't call me now, but back then, because I was really good for a big honorarium back then. And it was, you know, if you could go to church of the now, it was kind of cool. And I don't miss those days at all. I, I gave a lot of people great opportunities, but I like, you know, 
y'all are mine. I don't like, you know, people say, I don't like, can I come speak? And I'm like, no, I, I, I want to talk. <laughs> but, um, uh, gosh, I guess about, it's been over five years ago, uh, I made a connection with a gentleman, uh, and we, we had not met personally until Friday night, but we've talked extensively, and he's interviewed me on his radio show, and um, I was automatically impressed with his revelation, and I, this is going to sound really arrogant to say, and I'm just going to judge <laughs> it takes a lot of impression. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like when people say, this guy's got revelation, I'm like, what? And like, I preached that 20 years ago. You know, and then once in a while, somebody will say something, I'm like, okay, now, what? Say that again? No, that I had not considered. And that was good. And then you meet people that are kind of a missing piece in your life. And um, this gentleman definitely was that. Um, I, you know, I could say the same thing about him that I say about people like Rutherford. I really haven't met anybody quite like him. There's nobody. I can't compare him to anybody, especially when you kind of know his background. That's uh, your, your upbringing did not predispose you to be where you are now. That's, that's interesting how things like that work out. He has a professional name that he's worked under, but his covenant name is Jacob Israel. And he has written a, a book called The Calling. It's a very successful book. I asked him to bring them with him today. And he said, you know, I don't really want to sell stuff. He said, I, I just, uh, just want to come as, as your guest. Um, he came yesterday to be a part of the taping, and I think he was on all uh, 11 of the 14 shows we did, I believe, 11 or 12. And so he really worked hard and added something invaluable. Uh, he's going to be flying back to New York this afternoon, but uh, as long as he was here anyway, I said, you know what, I, uh, you're the first person I've ever had speak at Metron because this, is, you know, this isn't a church where I bring in guest speakers. This is my time, but I said, I really think you have something to say. Uh, I don't bring somebody in because I'm, I'm, I'm just out of that loop now. You know what I mean? So if I have somebody say something to you, it's because they have something to say. And uh, you will love him. I love him. He loves him. He's, um, he's, he's one of us. And you'll, you'll know what I mean uh, once you hear him. Uh, and I have something uh, with him. Honorary Metron T-shirt that I see many of you wear. Oh, by the way, thank you for those of you that are taking selfies with your T-shirt. Those are really cool. I like when you do that. I like to post them. So um, uh, I want to give this to him. And would you please welcome uh, my good friend Jacob Israel? Jacob. There you are. <laughs> Take your time. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to put this T-shirt down because otherwise I'm going to. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'm, I'm the first speaker. You, you all can sit down. You can all sit down. You're making me, making me nervous. Because, you know, I've never done this before. <laughs> That's the truth. First time, first speaker here, which is insane because I didn't prepare anything. Any, either. It just, I'm just going to kind of fly by, you know, the spirit, if you will. Um, yeah, this is basically the way I live my life is, is kind of like just going with the flow of things. And, you know, I, uh, my wife was like, she was like, <laughs> Bullet point. I like that. But I like the, that way. You have to, you have to put something up on the screen so people can read along and know where you're going and, and slow down and try to, you know, explain things because you go really fast and you're all over the place sometimes. Sometimes I just need you to just, just be quiet. So, <laughs> my wife's my inspiration. She's my love. She's my life. And uh, the irony about all this is how this all came to be was a while ago he did his first taping in the now and. And I sat there, and I really want to be on that show. But I'm not the kind of person to, you know, email him and say, hey, Jim, um, can you fly me out, put me up, and just let me be on a show, and while you're at it, would you let me speak at your church the next day? So <laughs> it's not really my thing, you know. So I just told my wife, honey, in a year's time, I'm going to probably be on that show. And, uh, and then I was originally going to do an event with my good friend Griff here. I mean, it was kind of like the vision. The vision was I was going to come to Atlanta. I was going to be on In the Now, which he didn't know yet. And then, then I decided that while I was on the show, I would do my own event where I asked Jim. I actually asked Jim to speak when he invited me. I said, oh, it's a good thing you have me on the show now because I want to do this event. This is all true. And uh, you can ask Griff. I mean, he was going to headline it for me. 
And, uh, and then I realized, you know, I really don't want to, I don't want to organize a show, but I really want to speak in front of a bunch of people because this is the time. For years, my whole life has been leading up to this moment. And, um, and I've known that. And, and I, I wrote that in my book. I kind of hid it in my novel. And, um, because I'm one of those guys that I'll, I'll kind of, you know, it's like I have this desire in my heart. You know that scripture which says God gives you the desires of your heart, you know? And, uh, and then they'll tell you in church, like, well, you know, if you want that car, I don't, I don't even know if people preach like that, but <laughs> if you want that car, you know, you just, God's going to give you that desire. And I never really believed that that's what the desire was. I always believed that the desire of your heart was to do what you authentically are called to do and to be who you authentically are called to be, which is why I think it's just awesome that this is the place. This is my coming out, if you will, you know. Yes, and I am straight, yes. And, but my point is, is that there's a scripture that says broad is the way. Have you ever heard that one? Broad is the way, right? And straight and narrow is that path, and few there be that find it. Um, there's a lot of people in the Christian church today, would you say? I mean, there's lots of people, right? So, you know, when people, and I, I do get this, I have, I have, a, uh, I have a blog, I, I have like 200 spiritual essays that I've written over the years um, on various topics. You can go to jacobisrael.com, got the plug in, honey, and um, you can just, you know, search from anything, but, you know, I'll have people write me and say, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and, and you're, you're possessed, and, 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 you know, and, and the irony is people are possessed, but they're not possessed by devils, if you will, okay? Um, because devil is really just a, another word. Like we had that, that song, that beautiful, oh my, how do I follow that, Danielle? Right? <laughs> but that song, you know, and, and, it's kind, and then it's followed by I'm going to light the way to heaven. And I can only, you know, I can only imagine that that was kind of the song you know, to bring me out here and possibly share a little bit more with all of you, okay? So I like audience interaction, all right? Um, so let's just, since I brought up the devil, let's just talk about the devil for a second. Father of all lies. lies. You, can, you, can, you can speak a little louder, yeah. Father of all lies. Okay, okay. Now the father of all lies, if you, I am the father of four children, so if I have four children, I am the father of four children, which means I produce four Four, thank you, after my kind, right, it's in my DNA, Noah, Shiloh, Anthony, and Ethan, bam, got that one in there too. Okay, so if he's the father of all lies, what would that produce? What's the offspring? Lies, thank you very much. Okay, and what does a lie kill? What does a lie destroy? The truth. And what sets us free? What does it set us free from? The lies. The lies we believe about ourselves. The lies we've been told. The lies we believe about God. The lies we believe about everything. Lies everywhere we go. Okay? So, now let's take the allegory. Because see, I'm all about allegory. God opens his mouth in parable. In dark sayings. Jesus said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, unto those that are without the understanding, because that's what it means, all things are done in parable, right? Now, we know what a parable is, boy who cries wolf. Does it matter if there's a boy? Does it matter if there's a wolf? Doesn't it seem like that's what religion is all about? There's a literal Jesus, there's a literal mountain, there's a literal Moses. It's all about the letter which kills not the spirit of the story which gives life okay so it's all about the spirit of the story now i learned this long ago and i realized that it was the spirit of the story that was going to set me free and it was insane because i can't take i can't take any credit for this because it was just i'd start reading and then it was like lightning from heaven um, one more time, I'm going to light the, I'm going to light the way to heaven, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I won't sing anymore. So, <laughs> lighting the way to heaven is an important thing. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Show me the way, right? What was Jesus called? The what? The, the way? The, 
and the which is what's missing in religion today, right? Show me the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, so let's look at the allegory of it. Um, you know, when I started sharing this a long time ago, a lot of people were like, oh, it doesn't make any sense. But now a lot of people are saying it. One of the, one of the really cool revelations I got was where Jesus was put to death. It's called Golgotha, which is called the place of the... And what's beneath the skull is the where we process thoughts of truth and thoughts of lies. So the truth would literally be put to death in our thinking, right? Now, when you understand that, when you take the man, the literal, when you take the boy and a wolf out of the equation, and you take the man out of the equation, and you look at this as, I have the way, the truth, and the life within me, okay? And then you look at a man who is, I was walking, oh, God. Atlanta is just a beautiful place. And I was walking yesterday. I didn't know what to do. I called Danielle. I said, I don't know what to do. I'm usually in my comfy clothes with you. And we're, I'm eating like gluten-free cookies. And we're watching TV. And it's like, I'm in a hotel. I don't know what to do. I said, I'll just walk. So I just went outside and I walked. And, and there was a man and he was sh shaving. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Maybe, you know, maybe he has an appointment or, or something. He didn't look like he dressed apart. He had his underwear on the outside of his pants. But, you know, you never know. So I, I, I kept walking, and, and, I, and I came back about, maybe it must have been, I was talking to Danielle, and it must have been 10 minutes later, and he's still there shaving. And I thought, my God, this poor man, he's, he doesn't even have a beard. He doesn't, it's, and, and it's like you don't know what to say. And see, I want to help people. You know, I want to help people. And, um, and, and, and that's, that, that's what brings me joy. Like I was talking about how what brings me joy is, and what makes me happy is helping people and being kind to people and being compassionate to people. So, of course, the best I could do at that moment, because I was just in my workout shorts, was I, I said, hi, how are you today? And he just didn't even acknowledge me. And now imagine that that's a man who is possessed by lies, if you will, okay? His whole life he was abused. He was told he was no good. You know, you're going to amount to nothing. That's the thing, you know? We're formed. Adam was formed with the dust of the earth. Study that word dust, everybody. Lies, imagination, idolatry. It's dead flesh, okay? It's dead flesh. It's not dirt. Everybody thinks it's dirt. We're formed that way, too. We come into this world as babies. We're given names. You are this. This is what you must do. This is how you must live. And then you become that first man. And there's a time, like little Ethan... When you're running around, you know, he's running around nudie. You know, he's like, mm, look at me, look at me. That's the way he, ta he doesn't talk like that. But he, he runs around nude a lot because, you know, after the shower, it's fun when you're a kid, right? There's going to come a time you can't do that. That's bad. I don't really like using this example because, you know, it's like it's kind of weird. You don't want to be, you know, 25 years old running on the street nude. You know, so you, you want to make sure that he learns the ways of this world, and the world has decided that's shameful, okay? And the world has decided that you can do this. This is a good thing here. You can't do the other thing, not the middle finger. That's bad. These are all these crazy laws that we have. You can't light fireworks in one country. Um, you can light fireworks in another. You can't, um, you can't marry who you love in one state. You can marry who you love in another. All of these lies, these laws of man, and we know that the law frustrates you. I can't measure, I can't measure up, I can't do that. So when Ethan realizes that he should be ashamed of his nakedness, all of a sudden he's under a curse. He's under a curse. And, and now if I told Ethan all the time, if I said, Ethan, you're, you know, you can't do that. You can't, see, I'm like obsessively clean. I like to clean things. And that has to do with me being formed into who I am, too. I like order. I like, I just feel better. Um, you know, and, and if I put all of that onto him, you know, and if I said to Ethan, you know, you're going to, you're, you're not going to amount to anything and you're such a bad boy. And I told him this on a regular basis. Faith comes by hearing. Okay. And you believe what you're told, especially by people like me, a parent, or by people in the pulpit, okay? So what happens is there was a time when all of us were happy. There was a time when you were happy, you were happy. We were all happy. We were free. Life was exciting. It's like, look at this. It's a toilet paper. It's fun to play with. You know, I mean, 
everything was magical until what happened? We died. We died. Adam. Adam, in, just so you know, in Hebrew means mankind as a whole. It's interesting that Adam is the first man, okay? You're looking at it. And Adam all die, okay? Because there's a time when we're alive and free until the lies of this world grab a hold of us and we die and we're cast where? Outside the garden. You got to believe in the God outside of you. You got to put your faith outside of you, okay? It's not within you. You can't amount to nothing. You're a sinner. It's this whole system is a lie. That's why the scriptures, the scriptures tell you this. And then you come to church and then they tell you that you should be ashamed of yourself. You know? Pharaoh, this is interesting. Pharaoh, I brought this up in the taping, means um, man's shame. And, and if you read it in the New Testament, it says, Pharaoh shall be their shame. Israel, which is a symbol of all of us, which is why it's my last name, okay, is we are the son of God, the child of God. And if a child of God, then the exact representation of God, like Ethan, is, I'm no better than Ethan, you know, I just created Ethan, if you will. Danielle and I got together, we said, let us make man in our image, and we did. <laughs> Bam! And it was done. And just so you know, speaking about in power and tension that Jim speaks about, that was all on Danielle because we already had three kids. And when we moved into this house, which, by the way, was a house that was way too expensive for us. Um, it was my wife's dream house when we were a kid. And we used to walk around and we look. She goes, I, I love that house. I'd lo I said, honey, we'll buy it. One day it'll be our house. We can't afford that house. Then it went into foreclosure. And then it sat there for years and everything. And so I tell her, I said, you pull up into the park, you know, call me from the driveway. She goes, oh, I'm at our house. We walk into the backyard, break into the backyard. We sit down and we go, we're going to do this. We're going to cut down those trees. We're gonna... And we just started to imagine what it would be like, right? Because I have left Adam. You know, I have left the, the, the man that is no good, who's all about the toil of the earth. And it's like, no matter how hard I get, it's the sweat of my brow and I'm just going to die. That's not me anymore. My life is easy. This is easy. I've never done this before, but I knew that it would be. I knew it would be fine, okay? So you have this first man, and I'm going to bring us back to that guy shaving, I promise. So that first man is told this, that, and the other thing. God says, don't eat of that tree. Don't eat of what's right and what's wrong. Because you start eating what's right and what's wrong, next thing you know, you can't wear white after, what is it? You know, and, her, and, and, and that just messes up, you know, that just messes up my wardrobe. So we don't want to get hung up in that. <laughs> you know what I mean? My wife asked me before I came out, she's like, well, it's, it's going to be, you know, I, I should wear white right now, right? <laughs> so we're allowed, right? I guess. I guess you can wear whatever you want unless someone says you can't and you believe it, right? Like you can't do this, you can't do that. How many people really believe that the, you know, they can do anything they want in life. Nah, maybe. Okay, that's good. Like three people raise their hand, how sad. Do you listen to him? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can. Every one of you, just so you know, I don't want to burst your bubble, you are creating your life exactly as you believe it will be. That's, I mean, that's the truth. The problem is, in Adam, you don't believe you could do nothing. You're scared in the corner, hiding behind the, the, the lies of religion, which is what fig leaves are. It's, you know, you're covering your shame. You're like, oh, I'm so shameful, but I tithe. I'm so terrible. Look at me. I'm terrible, but I help people get the parking spot at church. You're covering up this self-imposed lie that you are somehow a sinner. You know, the irony is not one of you know what sin is. How sad is that? You don't even know what sin is. If I ask you, oh, what is sin? You say, well, it's when you, you know, transgress the law of God or if you, you know, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Sin is simply, and you, you probably know the definition, to miss the mark. So what would the mark be? The mark is, what are we talking about earlier? Truth and lies. What's the mark? Truth. Okay? The mark of your life is truth. So every time that you miss the truth of who you are, you are sinning. The... Th it's the truth. That's the truth, okay? Sin 
Um, I believe it's according to, you know, I had all this stuff down. But you know what? One of my friends says, you know, maybe you should pull back from all the scriptures. I love the scriptures, just so you know. I love them. Um, and I read many holy texts. I just, you know, that's what I was told. That's where God was found. So I just believed it. And I just, it, this is the most important thing. And I must know this book. And, and then I realized that, you know, it actually was, it, there was a time for that. There's a time for John the Baptist. You know, there's a time for, you know, repent, you're, you're, come over here. And meanwhile, you know, the guy's wearing all the stuff that is the exact opposite of what the law demands. <laughs> it's irony. <laughs> he says the truth is coming, but then when the truth comes, he's like, is that really him? So what ends up happening allegorically is that John nature, that religious nature, which by the way is six months, six is the number of man, six months difference between John and Christ, he has to get his head chopped off. Uh, head is where you think. So the lie of the, the law-filled man, which is man's lies, has to get chopped off so Christ can begin his true ministry in you, right? And, and much like Adam has to die, because in all men, Adam die in Christ. He's the last Adam. Now, if we just take the names out of the equation, we don't deal with a Jesus at all. We deal with an Adam and an Adam, like a Jacob and a Jacob. So here's Jacob pre-revelation. Here's same Jacob, last Jacob, last man, post-revelation. Jacob, Israel. See, I chose that name on purpose because not, I love when people say, are you Jewish? I say, I don't even have a religion. I don't, I don't know what I am. I'm Italian. <laughs> you know? So, so like even my name, my name is a testimony of who you are. The book's titled The Calling because it's the calling of who you are. I wrote it years ago, not even knowing, you know, where I would be five years from now, meaning I had an idea but I didn't really know. You know, I believe, but you don't really know. Just like I believe. I told Daniel, I'm going to be speaking. Uh, has he asked? No, he hasn't asked. But I mean, it's going to happen. And it did. It just happened. I, I, I told him, look, I'm not going to do the event. He's like, well, while you're down, I really would like to have you speak. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool. Hang on the phone. Told you so. <laughs> this is all true, my hand to God. All right, so you have this first man. The first man who gets cast out of the garden. Now, does anybody remember what he produces when he's toiling around on the earth? He gets nothing but, not the rose, the thorns. Who else had a problem with thorns? Anybody remember? Paul. Who else had a problem with thorns? Jesus. A crown. What does a crown represent? When you see a crown, it means a rule or a reign. And what do they do with those thorns? They push them straight in there. Get them, get them in as deep as I can. And what did he cry out on the cross? Father, why have you forsaken me? Now, if he knew the truth, why would he believe a lie? Why would he believe a lie? Because God never left you nor forsook you. I never will leave you. You know, David said, I, I make my bed in hell that you're, that you're there. You know, Jonah prayed from the belly of hell, which, by the way, is a beast, right? It's a fish in the deep sea. I'll make you fishers of men. In the belly is something we, we feed our carnal bodies. It's all, this is all such beautiful symbolism. So you have Adam, okay? And then you have the last Adam. So you have the first man who brings death into the world. Now what is death? Because we're all physically dying, which is cool because we're all going about our life physically anyway. We're looking at everything sensually. Right? We're eating of that tree on a regular basis. There's a tree in the middle of your garden called your nervous system. It's a tree. Okay? You even have these things called dendrites, which are branches. Branches of thought. Okay? And right at the, the bottom of that tree is something called the brainstem, which is called the reptilian brain. I don't know if you know this. Isn't that interesting? There's a snake literally hanging. It's your lowest form of thinking. That's where you get your flight or flight, you know, fight or flight impulses. Your lowest form of thinking. So even that's why when Jim was talking about bringing the science into the spirit, it all adds up. You know, you just have to be willing to see it. You have to be willing to see pe past what people have told you, okay? So Adam ends up bringing death into the world. To be carnally minded is death. To think the lie is the truth is death because the lie kills the truth at the place of the skull. Where is the truth now? At the temple of God. Point to your temples. What's between them? Okay? The white throne of judgment. Where do we judge from? Okay? 
And, you know, and I got to tell you, the back of it is roundabout. It's, it's just fascinating to me. See, here's the thing is the book was sealed up until a certain time and a certain number of people to see that, as they say. The book is sealed up. It had to be. You know, that's why everything must be done in parable, because in seeing, they may not see. In hearing, they may not hear. Jesus went around. He said, you think you see, but you're blind. You don't, you don't get it. You think you see, but you're blind. Meanwhile, he'll go to the blind person who doesn't know a thing. Boom. Now you see the truth. He'll go to the possessed man, shaven, come over and say, hey, man, you, you don't need to shave anymore. He's like, oh, my God, for years I thought I had to shave all the time. Thank you. And the demon leaves him. The truth the truth casts out the lie. You understand? You guys get that, right? Okay. So, demons we understand according to, uh, oh, I wish I was like, that def, 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 definitely had to be one of the Old Testament books. I'm just not Rain Man. I can't point it down. But it says, <laughs> they sacrificed unto devils, unto demons, unto gods they knew not, unto gods their fathers knew not, unto gods they newly made up. A devil is something you created and you worship. It's the truth. It's right there in Scripture. If you think Scripture is your guide to truth, the truth is in there. You see, the truth is everywhere. You know, and that's why a lot of people who have a problem with Scripture, you know, um, I, I'm cool with it because I don't need to talk about Scripture. I don't need to. I, just, it just, I know there's so many people that are just addicted to it. You know, and so you have to go in and you got to, you know, you got to show them the way to heaven. <laughs> you got to turn on the light because in darkness, you bump into things and you get hurt. And you don't have a bigger picture of what's, what, what can be. You turn on the lights and you say, wow, look at all this. This is all possible, right? Now, who here knows what heaven is? Okay, good. I'm glad. This is awesome. Okay, heaven. Um, is not meat or drink. It is righteousness, peace, and joy. You know it. And power in the Holy Ghost and Spirit, okay? So heaven legitimately is within you. So if the kingdom of heaven, and it starts off like this, right? But it grows. It grows. Because, you see, the problem is it was alive and blooming until we ate of that tree. Um, yesterday... The pathways, do you know where I'm going as a baby, right? Infinite possibility. And then, but scientists don't understand. Something just, it's like the doors, they just shut, everything shuts down all of a sudden. And then we just become these narrow-minded people. It's the lies. You're this, you're that. You have to, you can't like that person. You know, stay away from that person. Be scared of that person, you know. And lies will ruin you because and where's the end of the lie? It's death. You know, what did they say the devil wants to do from you? Was to steal from you, take from you, rob from you, kill you, you know, ultimately? But there's a reason. The waster is there to do that because guess what? Every shepherd needs a sheepdog, okay? So, you know, if you're following after the wrong way, there's kind of a guidance system already in place within you because God cannot deny himself. You can't deny who you are already within. You cannot Mess this thing up. That's the good news. You may suffer along the way. You may even suffer a whole life and die, but it ain't over because you can't mess it up. Your purpose is there for a reason, but we're infinite. We, there's no end to where we're going and what we can do. The trick is, which is what today is all about, it's coming out of Adam and getting into Christ. It's actually about being born again, which so many people have absolutely no idea what that means. Because to be born again is becoming a new creation, okay? I'm different than I was then, you know? And when you're born again, you are a new, you're the same person. You know, that's why we're talking, um, we're talking about the, the wounds. And you said that beautiful thing about how, you know, you can, this is what I received in my friend's house. You know, the wounds are there for a reason to show you that I've been somewhere. This is my testimony. But get this, that they, don't, they don't hurt anymore. They just look cool, you know? And, and that's what wounds are there for. So, so our life gets us to this point so that we, then the light turns on within us, we, and then we become a light. And then we start sharing that light with others. And then there becomes a time when that light 
the time is now when that light starts going all over the world. You light one candle, it lights a thousand, it lights a hundred thousand, it lights a million, it lights. The truth casts out the lie. And since the truth is innate in all of you, you don't even have to believe it because my words will not return void. They will accomplish what I set out to do. I came here for a very specific reason, and that is to help you all find the joy that my Dan Dan and my family and I have right now to get you to find the excitement of the journey and the ride. And Jim was going on and on. I wanted raisinets. <laughs> and it was in the bag. <laughs> there was nobody before me. There was nobody behind. I wanted raisinets. Now, that's huge. If you understand that, that's the way life is supposed to be. I want some raisin nuts, don't you? <laughs> Again, they'll show up in your bag, I promise, because that's the power that's within you. So let's talk about, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm here, here until I fly out. So let's talk about the, uh, the two men, and the two men in Scripture, because this was the first revelation that hit me. Um, and I find it ironic because, you know, I'm born June 11th, and uh, Jacob is, you know, a, <laughs> he's a twin, and, um, you know, I've always considered myself a little schizophrenic. Um, no, no, I'm just <laughs> But, um, you know, Jacob wrestled. I was the, the uh, you know, the head writer for World Wrestling. A lot of people don't know that about me. Um, you know, so I, I really kind of connect with the character, but the irony is, you know, I said years ago to a, a good friend of mine named Larry Leak, who's like a mountain man, just an amazing musician, much like you. Um, and, you know, I told him, I said, yeah, so I don't really tell people this, but um, I'm going to be Jacob Israel. That's who I'm going to be. And this is like years ago. This is when I was doing TV, getting Emmy Awards, and, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember he said to me, he goes, yeah, you could be the toilet if you want. I said, well, I know, but I don't want to be the toilet. I want to be Jacob Israel. Now, and so now that's who, I, that's who you came to see because I believed it, and that's what I decided I am. I am not the name that the world gave me. That's not, what, because you told me that's who I am? I got to believe it? I don't got to believe that. Adam was in the garden, he was formed. Your name is Jamie. Your name is Jamie. I like Jamie. Everybody got, you know, my friend, you can call me Jamie. You know, the cat's out of the bag. I love when people are like, whatever your name is, because, you know, I tell people in private, I said, you know, you can call me, you know, the... Uh, and, and then they like to throw that in your face when all of a sudden something that you're sharing kind of goes against what they're used to, and that's fine, you know? But that's not who I am. I'm not that kid who, you know, felt alienated. I'm not that kid who, you know, got, got Crohn's disease and was sick and was, and, and was picked on and was just, you know, in and out of the hospital. I'm not that kid that, you know, felt just so alone and rejected. That's not who I am. That's who the world told me I am. We get our beliefs from our parents, from society, from the government, from religion. Religion is the big one because the sad thing is you're so broken by the world and you're like, I just want to be free. So you come here and they're like, can you put your hands out so I can just put the shackle you a little more? And that's what it is. Oh, you're sad. Well, guess what? You're going to go and you're going to burn endlessly. Unless you say a couple of words. Yeah. Just, no, no, no. Just come down here. You want to give you. Just say Jesus is Lord. Yeah, I know that wasn't his literal name. <laughs> now, Jesus didn't teach that. I don't know if you all know this. He didn't teach that. All right? Okay? He, he, taught, he said he had to, get, had to go away because everybody wants, you all want to put your faith in this. When Moses went to the mountain, he wanted everybody to come. And they were like, no, we don't want to go there because if we go up there, we're going to die. What does that mean? I don't want to get rid of my identity in death. I don't want to give up Adam. I go up there, I got I to gotta sacrifice everything that I am in this world. And I tell you, the sacrifice is not, it's not a bad thing. You're scared because the prayer that I prayed, which I, um, you know, I, I still do pray, because, I mean, anybody who says they know God and they know that they're God, I mean, I know what I know. But the enormity of who we are and who we all are, like I was trying to explain that, you know, I exist, I know that. 
You exist, you know that. I'm the beginning and the end of my day and my life. You're the beginning and the end of your day and your life. We are all connected and all dependent on each other. I can share the truth that would literally set the world free, but if none of you agreed, I'm up on a cross crying, Father, why have you forsaken me? See, it takes, it takes a village. I don't know. It takes everybody. It takes everybody. And the good news is all will be saved. And what are they saved from? The truth sets us free from the lie. We're set free from the lies we believed. And let me tell you about these lies. These lies pop up all the time. Because, you know, if you're conditioned to believe a certain way, you know, um, like in, you go over to the faucet, oh, don't touch the hot water. You know, and if I, if I was so scared that, you know, my son was going to burn himself, I could put a phobia in him, you know, just, and that's what happens is there are these phobias in us. You know, don't trust that guy. You know, that guy broke, remember that last guy broke you? The next guy's going to do the same thing. I don't trust that guy. And then you have your parents and you have your friends and everybody say, oh, same thing's going to happen again. You know, Danielle and I met on our, our first date. <laughs> Irish times, it wasn't such a great date because there were so many people and so we, we met again, you know, weeks later, but it was the second date, which was really the first date because it's not the first, but the, the last. So when I met her, I knew, I told her, I said, I'm going to marry you. You know, now who knows if I just said that because I decided, but I just knew it and this is true. And we got married six months later, but you can't believe the headaches. You know, you can't, you can't, you barely know him. And remember that last guy and blah, blah, you know, and it's all these lies. And then you have to deal with all this in your head. Those are the lies we have to get rid of. Now, how do we know the lie from the truth? Well, in fear, there is torment, right? So anytime a thought comes to your mind and it starts to mess you up, I do this. I go, stop that, stop that. I do, I do a little, in my book, I have, um, I have a character that, points Thomas into the head, hits him three times right here. And, and um, not that I believe in, <laughs> you know, I guess there's a faith where you, you point people, you touch people, it's a tapping, it's called tapping, right? It, it, but I just like the symbolism of, you know, waking up the truth within you and reminding yourself what's a lie and what's truth. The truth will give you peace, okay? Now, like, for example, the lie will say, that guy shaving is going to cut your throat with that little razor. That'll make you scared and make you go the other way. The truth will say, that poor man, what can I do to help him? And you come over and you say something, you walk away, you know, which I wish I had the words to help him. You don't gotta shave anymore. Oh, thanks, I forgot. And, and, and it is the truth that casts out the lie. Okay, so I wanna talk about the two men. Adam, Christ, first man, last man. First man brings death into the world. You're gonna like this. Last man is a shepherd. Okay, and pay attention to that. The second Adam, the last Adam, okay, shepherd. Adam has two sons. Anybody remember? First one? What did Cain do? Killer. Brings death into the world. Second born Abel is a shepherd. Second born is a shepherd. Okay. Abraham has two sons. Now the first son, this is a beautiful picture of us. <laughs> he didn't believe he could have a kid. I don't believe it. I can't, I can't do that. I can't speak of that, Tron. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. Uh, so then, you know, his wife says, well, if you have sex with my, you know, my slave, um, then we can have it and we'll pretend it's fine, okay? So the firstborn is actually born in bondage, okay? And guess what he is? A hunter, a killer. And what did the, right? What, what, did, what did Abraham have to do? He had to get rid of Ishmael because he was scared that Ishmael was going to take away the kingdom which was reserved for Isaac, the shepherd, okay? Shepherd, Isaac. Isaac has two sons. Firstborn's Esau, hunter, fiery darts, arrows. Okay? These are all allegories of the lies that kill us and hurt us. And that's why when you're in Christ, catch this one, you can drink any deadly thing. It won't hurt you. Because the poison is the lies that people say. That's why when Paul, it was funny because so many times I wanted to jump up. And they we're mentioning Paul and how he got bit. And everybody was expecting him to die. But I understood that the sticks were, he was lighting a fire in people. And people didn't like it. So then out of those sticks, out of what he was doing, a serpent came up and bit him. What's a serpent? It's a liar. A religious person came over, you generation of vipers, and bit his hand. Hand represents your authority. And he's like, shake it off, shake, shake it off. 
right? Lies can't touch me. Lies can't hurt me because I walk in the truth, okay? So, secondborn's Isaac, Jacob and Esau. Esau, firstborn hunter, he gives away his birthright to feed his, remember I talked about carnal desires, what is it? Your belly. And, and it's such a beautiful picture of what we give up this kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. We give up our righteousness, our right thinking. That's what it means. You probably didn't even know what that meant. Right thinking, proper thinking, proper judgment, truth, peace, and joy. We give it up to fill our carnal desires. So very sad. But that's the way of the world. And guess what? God's like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him a big nation. Ishmael's big. It's all over. We're all, you know. Yeah, but the elder is going to serve the younger. Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. This Jacob, we'll say Jamie, okay, became Israel. Jamie was swallowed up in Israel. This little man who was scared and picked on and felt I'm the man right now. Do you understand? Nothing can tell you. You can't tell me I can't do something. I will do it. You can't tell me. Griff is a perfect, he's been in my life for a long time. Griff and I have been telling each other what we're going to be doing for years. You would think we were crazy. Some of the things this man has gone through where, you know, calling me up, lost everything, you know, and I, oh, but it's going to be fine. And then I lost everything, but it's going to be fine. And we're going to do this and we're going to go, we're going on to do, I, I do a terrible impersonation. I should, <laughs> we're going to do great things, Jay. <laughs> We're gonna do it. And he knows it, and, he's, you know, and he affirms what I'm doing, and I affirm what he's doing because my words are life. His words are life. The truth sets us free, and you've got to hear it because faith comes by hearing. Okay, so Esau, hunter, killer. Jacob, which is perfect for me, a little trickster, you know? He had to put on the skin of the older brother to get in there and kind of get that. You know, he had to trick y'all. Think, think you all know, think that I'm one of you. I'm not one of you. I'm in disguise, right? And the first part of that journey, which is when I was the head writer of one of the largest Christian networks in the world, I was scared all the time that Esau was going to kill me. I was running around. I was all so scared, right? And I went to work for Laban. Laban is a sheep shearer. A sheep shearer makes money off of the sheep. He fleeces the sheep. Jacob was a shepherd. I was a shepherd at one of the largest sheep shearing businesses there is, okay? And I was scared when I was there. And they make a lot of money. It's, it's good, yeah. It's, it's, you know, good. But, but that kingdom's coming down because today's the day when, that the Lord has made. No, today's the day when the truth is going to be shouted from the rooftops. It's just, this is all there is. There's nothing stopping it because it just is. And now it's time. And we're going to be set free because we already are set free. We just don't know it. You're just catching up. This has already happened, all of this. Okay, so we, we see that there's a firstborn. This, I mean, I can go on. Leah, Jacob was tricked into marrying Leah. Leah had poor eyesight. Eyesight's symbolic of understanding. Leah gives birth to 10 sons. There are 10 laws. I mean, you could, you know, you could uh, deal with the symbolism all day long, but the truth, the true wife was Jacob. The one that he, not Jacob, Rachel, who Jacob wanted to marry at the well which is where you get that life-bringing water, right? Life-giving water, where he kissed her. I'm going to marry you. And that was my Dan Dan. So, <laughs> and I didn't marry him. So, so, so the second, once again, gives birth to Benjamin and Joseph. Benjamin being, just so you know, it means the son of the right hand. Joseph meaning God has added. These Hebrew names are in fantastic. I'm trying to throw so much at you because I'm just hoping you'll take this. Like Joseph, Mary, and Jesus... Mary in Greek means rebellion, um, and it's a picture. That's why there's so many Martha's, Miriam's, and it's a picture of the, you know, almost the rebellion of our soul and how God has added Joseph to their rebellion, salvation, and, and he's a Nazarite and separated them from the ways of the world. It's all this beautiful picture of a life that has changed. Every single story in Scripture is a story of you. That first man, that last man is you. You know, you're Adam, you're Christ, you're Cain, you're Abel. You're Ishmael, you're Isaac, you're Esau, you're Jacob, okay? 
So now, if we're these two men and we're all stuck in Adam because in Adam, all men die. In ignorance, all men die. In Christ, the second Adam, all men are given life. Why do you think Jesus said, you got to be born again? Because the first you ain't cutting it. <laughs> the first you is dead in their trespasses from the real you. You forgot who you are. That's why every scripture is like, awake, you sleeper, you meathead. He's in the, he's the ship of our life. The storms are coming. And what do they do? It's then that they wake him up, wake him up. And he's like, oh, just, just settle down. When the storms of your life come, you got to wake up and you got to remember who you are. It's all noise, people. It's all noise. And, and, and there's a reason for it, because you got to tune it out, because it's not real. It's make-believe, and you created it. You don't even realize. You believed what they told you, because they believed what they told you, because a curse is passed from generation to generation to generation until it's broken. And then you have to feed the truth into your children, and this world is going to be paradise, okay? Today, you will be with me in paradise. Paradise is not some future event. Paradise is righteousness, peace, and joy in the here and now. It is knowing that everything you do has purpose, that everything you do has meaning, that who you are matters, and who you are, there is no end to what you can do, and there is no end to what you can know, and there's no end to who you are, because you are infinite. Okay? You are infinite. You are more than your body. You're more than your body. You're more than your circumstance. But this circumstance is a beautiful story. The guy shaving, he has, I mean, I can tell you, that's a great movie. You know? The guy shaving, that's a great movie. It's a sad movie to, to me, but to him, that's the story he's in. He can change it. Like the time that I was, you know, I, there was a time when I, I battled with severe depression, and I remember crying on the floor, and I was very young. And, um, and I remember at the moment I thought, I could stop crying right now if I wanted to, and I did. And I'm going to go wash my face. And I wash my face, and something hit me. I'm going like, I don't need the medication or anything else. I just I need to change my thinking, you know? And I did. And I did. And I realized that I just wanted some attention. I loved telling people about how sick I was. I love to, I could tell you, oh, I got the blood transfusion and everything else. And you see, funny, because the ego creeps up. I'm doing it right now, just not the way I used to. Because there's still a part of me that wants to tell you, feel bad for me. But you shouldn't feel bad for me. You shouldn't, because my life is truly blessed. You know? Uh, we were talking about the, um, I don't know even where my, I am on time, so just, you, you could just wave me down. Um, so Jesus says to be born again, okay? And to be born again, you have to enter the kingdom, right? And the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy, we understand. Um, now the kingdom, the gates are made of what? Pearl. How's a pearl formed? Anybody remember? Suffering. Suffering. But not just suffering. Think of it. It's not like life-threatening. It's irritation. And isn't life like that? You have like a little irritation, and you're like, oh, this really stinks. And then it's like all of a sudden it's kind of like, oh, well, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. I cover it over. And it's, oh, I'm uncomfortable again. I'm comfortable again. Then all of a sudden that hardens because you're trying to cover up the lie with a bunch of nonsense. You're like, you know, so... There's a person at work, and they hate me. They hate me. They hate me. I know they hate me because they said something, and in my head I created that they hate me, so they must hate me. They're going to get my job. That's the next thing that the ego tells you, the liar, the father of all lies, which gives birth to nothing but lies, which, by the way, thorns in the flesh, that's, you know, the cares of the world. Jesus was given the crown of thorns. I know, Danielle, I'll slow down. <laughs> yeah, she's, that's my Dan Dan. <laughs> so... So the irritation that you cover up, the lie that you cover up, that thorn that you're trying, instead of plucking it out, you cover it up. It starts to harden, and then it starts to hurt again. Because you can't cover up a problem. If someone's bothering at your work, and you hate them, and they hate you, and one of you is trying, and then you try to outwit each other. Maybe I can get them fired, right? Maybe I can move. I got to tell my boss, I can't work with her anymore. I can't work with him anymore. I can't do So then you, and then what happens? You move to another store, you move to another office. Guess what happens? Thorn comes back. There's another person who doesn't like me. <laughs> See, the problem is it's been there the whole time because you created it. And instead of getting rid of it and realizing that you 
decide who is going to love you. You decide who is going to hate you. If, I don't know your name, what is your name? Hi, Jeff. If I decide that Jeff doesn't like me while he's sitting here, I could be stressed out as I'm talking. That guy doesn't like me. Next thing you know, he's like, boo, go back to New York. I'll create it, it'll happen. But yet if I don't allow that thought to take root, because thoughts take root, which is gonna bring me back to thorns, you see? It's gonna bring me back to thorns. Because if I don't allow that to take root, okay, it can't grow and become something that hurts me. Take your thoughts captive to see if they be true. And how do we know if thoughts are true or if they are not? Lies will cause you pain and suffering. He doesn't like me, makes me feel uncomfortable. It must be a lie. So then I am going to say, no, it's me, and he's a wonderful man who likes me. You do, right? See, I created that. All right, so let's talk about the thorns for a second. I met a wonderful man named, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. His name is, I, I'm not going to use names. A very, very big name. I met a lot of big name pastors, and I got to meet with them, and I got to share things, and I remember them saying, oh, yes, no, that's not what it is. And I used to think, oh, my God, I just gave you the keys to the kingdom. I just gave you the keys to life. Like, I'm giving you keys to the kingdom, right? I'm going to give you a key right now. Because if you love scripture, this is like a key, like a guide map. It's like, you know, when you look at a map and there's the key, okay, this is the way to figure it out, okay? If you want to know what things are in scripture, if you want to know where the devil is, do Knowledge is increased. You have a search engine. Type in devil. Read everything there is to know about it. Type in demon. Read everything there is to know about it, okay? It'll tell you what it is. You want to know where the thorn is? Type in thorn. Search. Read everything about a thorn, okay? Adam's kicked out of the garden. The garden, by the way, is you. Today you'll be with me in paradise. The kingdom is within. If the paradise is within, that's where heaven is, and it is. Righteousness, peace, and joy is within you, okay? So the kingdom is within you. You gotta remember that. The kingdom is within you. It's not, it doesn't come with observation. You can't say look here or look there because behold, it's in your midst. It's in you. That's who you are. He that ascends, this is, imperf- this is very important. I want you to pay attention to it. Is he that first, so that after he descends and when he ascends again, he leads captivity captive. Y'all don't have a choice but to come along on the ride that I'm giving you right now. Y'all don't have a choice to come on a ride that Jim's given you. You don't, because these words are life. And when you ascend into righteousness, peace, and joy, when you ascend truth as opposed to the lies that kept you down, you Share that, and that becomes a light that leads the way to heaven. You want to know the way? You're looking for a word? You got it. You got it. So the keys to the kingdom that Jesus gave you were this. That's it. Love others. Now, if you love others, let's think about this, because it covers everything. The law, you know, I said this yesterday, and it almost seemed a little blasphemous. Jesus said, Jim's, you know, Jim, Jim has this wonderful thing where he says, you know, Jesus said, behold, I, you know, it's been said. And he goes, behold, I say now. You know, so he, he like kind of, you know, flipped the switch on everything. So you've heard it said, love God and love others. I say to you, love others. Because if you do that, you love God. Because that's what God wants, right? Because that's all there is. There's no, there's no God to love outside. That is imaginary. There is no man that knows God. It's impossible to know God, but we know others. And by loving others, Jesus said, what you do to the man shaving, you do to me. If you think that, you know, this is some terrible thing, you've done, because that's all there is. Your perception is your reality. You literally change the world. If you think raisinets, you're going to get raisinets. You have to walk in the light, people. You have to see the bigger picture. The lies kept us blind, but the truth walks over and says you're blind. We're a little, we're a little sandy right here. Because sometimes people need things. They need to believe in it. You know, they need to believe. So I got, oh, you need some kind of ritual? Or uh, go down, uh, wash yourself in the river, and you'll be fine. Sometimes people need that because they can't wrap their mind around the fact that we don't need anything anymore. We don't need it. We don't need tradition. We don't need these things. What we need is to love. 
Love draws a multitude to change. And what are we being changed from? The lie, the dead man, to the living Christ, okay? A prophet Obadiah talked about the many Christs, the Christs, you know, that are going to rise up. Prophet Joel talked about the, you know, these, these great men, you know, this, the wonderful symbolism of Jesus, you know, walking through walls. I walked through so many walls already with a lot of you, so many more at home. People put walls up all the time, but the truth walks right in. And what does he do when he walks in? When the truth comes into your heart, you eat. But you don't eat that food that perishes. You know, it's that bread. It's the living word of God. I have meat to eat. It's my Father's will. That's what you're eating. And what's the Father's will? Love others. And that's what I eat. And that's why this bread has to be broken down so you can see that there's more. So let's go back to the thorn, shall we? <laughs> okay, so the thorns. Paul had a thorn. So I talked to this amazing man who wrote this great book called Thorn in the Flesh, the big bestseller. You know, it's kind of his claim to fame. And I told him, I said, you know what the thorn really is? It's not all that. Some people say, oh, it was a, he had poor eyesight. Oh, he had a bad leg. And, you know, oh, it was the Pharisees. No. The scriptures tell us what the thorn is, and you already know it. That's the irony. You know it, and you're like, I wanna, I don't, and you're trying to think what is, but you know it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you right now. It's very, very simple, okay? A sower goes out into the field, and he sows seed. The seed is the word of God, okay? Some of it falls among thorns. The thorns strangle the truth, right, and bring it to death. The disciples say to Jesus, well, what are the thorns? It's the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. It's the sin of the world, the thought of foolishness. It's worrying about that person at work. It's worrying about your mortgage. It's worrying about your friend. It's worrying about your kids. It's worrying about its fear where you need to be free from it. The thorns, the cares of the world, are the sins of the world. Same thing. The thought of foolishness is thin, okay? And it's foolish to think that just because you're a little behind or that you're losing a house or that, you, that, that that's it for you, that your world is coming to an end. It is not. You don't know. You don't see the bigger picture. When bad things happen, they lead to greater things. Everything, everything that's happened in my life that has been terrible and devastating, literally, it's kind of like, oh, that tree's not producing fruit. All right, let me come over there and I'll, I'll dig up that ground. All right, we'll see what happens now. I'm going to come back. My life has been dug up. Your lives are being dug up. The problem is a lot of you still aren't producing fruit. So you keep, oh, it's not producing. I'm going to come over there and uh, dig it. I'm tired of being dug up, aren't you? I want to produce that fruit. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? Look it up. That's the thing. And a tree is known by its fruit. Okay? We are known by how we love. Love sets us free. So the thorns, cares of the world, sins of the world. Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world, wore a crown of thorns. When you go back and you look up every time that you see the word thorn, thorns, thistles, you know, they hurt, they prick, <laughs> you know. And, and this beautiful symbolism is trying to show you something. God hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't left. There is hope for you. You're not lost. You're not not going anywhere in life. Your vision has been impaired. You just don't see the bigger picture. And so what happens is you get these little bursts of revelation, these little insights. That's, you know, that's what it is. It's like lightning from heaven. And when it's dark at night and there's lightning, for a second you can, you can see the bigger picture. Then it goes away and then you forget that maybe you know, the field is a lot larger. You know, the more that lightning comes, it's easier to see. But when the light is here, darkness flees from it. And what's darkness? It's just our ignorance. Now, I'm going to tell all of you that I know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that everything I am saying is 100% true. That if you, and just so you know, loving others also means loving yourself. And it's understanding that if you've made mistakes, they probably weren't mistakes. You just created them because you were ignorant. And the man was formed to think that he needed to shave. I can't believe this has become <laughs> kind of my whole little bit. But he, he believed that that's what he had to do. And he had to do. And, and it's not really his fault. He just believed that someone needs to help set his mind right. 
someone had to come over to Paul and put him on the path and set him straight. Because what happened? Paul thought he knew it all. I'm going to, I know the law. Let me tell you something. Oh, no, you can't. You have to wash your hands. You know, and all that symbolism, you know, it's all symbolism. All of it is symbolism, okay? And what happens was, you know, he was humbled by a big, bright light. There was a time when I thought there was, you know, there was a time I knew Jesus after the flesh, if you will. That that was my savior. And there were demons that were going to get me. There was a time I was scared. There was a time that I was worried that I was going to go burn endlessly in a place called hell. But then the light came and I was like, I know nothing at all. I see nothing at all. I've been blind. Okay? And so you see this picture of Paul being blinded. It's Everything that he thought he knew, he thought that he saw. Jesus said, you think you see, but you see nothing. The light comes and shows you you know nothing. So then someone has to come and guide you like a little bit. Come on, little Ethan. Come on, honey. It's okay. You, know, you can be nudie if you want to be. <laughs> you know, you, you need, it's like you got to be led by a child because I can't throw a bunch of meat. I can't, there's so many things I'd love to say to you, you know, but I can't throw that at you because it's going to sound almost ludicrous. Because if you can't hear what I'm saying now, how are you going to hear what I'm going to say the next time I'm here? See how I did that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, do I still have time? I just want to make sure that I'm not going over. No? Okay, so listen. <laughs> I was hoping someone would say, look, you got a little time. So, please, 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 today, see yourself the way I see you, infinite possibility. You are more. I, I wrote that on my, um, my website for a reason. You're more than you know. You are more than you know because you are endless. So the possibilities for your life today, you can go to the movies or you can go to the pharmacy or you can go to the market or you can go to a friend's. You have choices. The difference is you believe those choices are real and you can do them. You have faith you can do them. You just don't believe that you can fly. You know, you don't believe that you can, you know, I don't know, save someone who's dying. You know, you have to have a bigger vision. You know, my people perish because they lack vision. You know, uh, we're starved for it. We need a vision for our life. You know, these vision boards and everything. Griff has an amazing vision board, which I love it. Him and his family, it's so beautiful. Have a vision for yourself because you're a creator. You are a son of God. If a dog has a, a baby, it's a puppy. If a elephant has a baby, it's an elephant. If God has a baby... Okay? So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jacob Israel. It's jacobisrael.com where they can order your book. The, the name of the book is The Calling. Uh, he is a prolific writer. I, I'm amazed at the stuff he can write. He'll... he'll Sometimes I write an essay, he'll send it to me, he'll say, check this out, and I'm scrolling down like, I'm going to have to take the afternoon off to read all of this, but it's amazing. Uh, so please uh, connect with him, friend him on Facebook, he's a, a great communicator. Uh, it definitely will not be the last time that you're here. Griff, is there some, uh, where are you going to be next that people can see you? What's, are you, okay, you got a website people can go to? Two trillion dot com, and you can see Griff. He's hysterical, and he's a great communicator. Um, remain standing very, very quickly. Alicia, come here. She, come here, just. A he referred. Now I want her to explain what he was talking about because he referred to this thing that we're brought in with infinite. Just ex explain that very quickly. What he's talking about. Okay, so what he was referring to is um, when children are born, and I'm going to give the scientific explanation, but there's also my bits of in there. Um, so when children are born, there's an understanding that there's many neuron, neuron paths that are created, almost to the point where you would say infinite amount of pathways. Yeah. Um, but to our understanding, because we learn associations, we learn ways to go in the world and learn and understand the world, there are many pathways that are pruned away. Um, if we don't travel down a certain pathway, there's no reason for it to be there, and so it is for our survival for... Which is what he was, you were talking about, you were saying branches, every branch does not produce fruit. See, see how the spiritual and the scientific, it's cool. Yeah. 
Um, well, that's pretty much it. It's, if we're not traveling down certain pathways, our brain learns, well, we must not need it to survive, and thus those pathways are pruned away. Um, now, scientists are debating whether those pathways can be regenerated. It's my belief that they can. I think we have infinite possibilities. We were born that way, and so I think we can go back to being that way. Um, but, you know, that's where science has its limits the same way religion tends to have its limits. So. Good. There's, she actually went into it a little more on the program, but they'll be out. What I'm believing, and I don't want to put BJ on the spot, but I would like to have one a week come out. That's what I would like. When I said it yesterday, he didn't seem to freak out, so I, that seems to be in the realm of possibility. Uh, we did 14 episodes. We even did one with just Ken and me, and uh, we're saving that one for last. And uh, it, was very, it, was, it was very, very good. Um, let me run this quickly. Uh, show you how to give online if you're writing a check make it to JESM if you have cash today usually I tell you to pay it forward but Jacob came just as a favor to me today so if you have cash uh, he go give it to him just st stuff his pockets full I would love I, I would love that so uh, uh, he did not ask for that like I said he's just coming because he was here anyway but I'd like him to leave with something as well let me show you how to do this online because we're in the 21st century and Danny will be back there with the checks. Then I'll speak a blessing over you. Contributing at Metron is quick and easy. Simply text the amount you'd like to contribute to 404-620-5044. Once you've sent the amount you'd like to give, you will receive a link. Clicking the link will take you to a one-time registration form. This will make the contribution process even easier in the future. Once you've filled out the information form, you will then see a successful registration and donation page. You can now give any time by simply texting an amount to this number. To set up recurring contributions, log on to BishonTheNow.com and click Simple Give. We have more information on how to do this available for you in the back of the room. Thank you for your investment in Metron. Once again, I want to say uh, we absolutely add our amen to everything that Jacob said today. It was, it was great. You see what I mean? It's like um, I, I love that it's rapid fire. It's stream of consciousness. It's a river of life. Uh, it's just it's good, 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 good. Uh, he's like, what, see what I said? He's one of us. And uh, it's just it was good. And this will not be your last time. And we, we know that. Uh, it was definitely a divine connection. Chandra, thanks for flowing with uh, Marshall. That was very cool. There was a that was that was cool. I love when cool stuff happens like that. Here's the here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have such a great day today. If if you need to take a nap, you're gonna sleep deeply this afternoon. You're gonna have something wonderful to eat tonight. Um, you're gonna get a little exercise. You're gonna walk. You're gonna breathe deeply. Uh, if you got stuff coming up this week, you're going to be totally ready for it. Good night's sleep. You're going to sleep like a baby. He, sl uh, he gives his beloved sleep is what the scripture says. And when you wake up tomorrow, you're going to be energized and refreshed and ready to go. Uh, if, if you've got a lot to get done this week, you will get it done. I'm telling you, something supernatural happened yesterday with our energy level because we just got those things produced because we had Ken's um, family reunion to go to in Eatonton so I said all right we, we're going to be out here by a certain time and we were out an hour ahead of time with with way more done than I had even planned for and I'd already planned for a lot so something there was an energy shift yesterday and all things are possible and just like Alicia said those neurons all that is still the possibility is still there what he's talking about being born again your your latter will be greater than your former uh, the second man always swallows up the first man. And so the, the person you're becoming is so much greater than you even realize. You already are that, but you're living from the inside out. And out of your belly is flowing a river. As you speak it into existence, you're walking out your own prophecy. You know, there was a day we had to bring prophets in and stand in line and wait for them to speak over us. Now we're, we're the best prophet that we know. We, we, we prophesy over your life. Your future's in your, future's in your mouth. Uh, Jackie was telling me before uh, service that she just watched the Matrix trilogy and talking about the power of the observer. And she said, you know, uh, for some people, hell probably does exist because they did create it. You know what I mean? It's like that's what they observe. That's what they look for. And uh, so, it, you know, we, he talked about it. You already know it. I talk about it all the time. 
you're creating your life. So go ahead and make the decision right now that this week is going to be productive. You're going to feel good. You're going to be happy. You're going to have a good attitude. You have the mind of Christ. Uh, the Lord perfects that which concerns you. You have favor. I love what he said about believing Jeff liked him. That's you're, you're, you don't even realize how much you create something. Even, and I know we got to go, but Ken has worked for a man for the last what, eight years. He was kind of like a father to that whole team of, of maintenance guys that kind of run Reynolds Plantation. Well, they just recently replaced him, and everything he heard about this new guy coming in, people were like, Oh, man, you're going to hate this guy. He's a, he's a jerk. He's impossible to work for. I mean, he was even thinking about putting in a transfer because you know, he had such a good, like the guy he worked for before, like if we were out of town and he needed an extra day, he would call him and, and Johnny would say, oh, yeah, take the day. You're fine. Somebody, he didn't suggest it. Like if you're, taking, if you're taking Thursday off, go ahead and take Friday off and you all just have a good time. So that, that's a great thing when you have something like that. And I, and I, I told him, I said, just, just wait and see. Just change your thinking on this guy he may that may just be something that people say and this has been two months now so it's been long enough for you to see this guy's awesome he's like he you know really cares about the the men and really wants them to have a great experience and I said isn't that amazing where, where was all that coming from these people were saying he's impossible to work for not not at all that's what they were observing not at all he's like totally you know, in the morning, he's like, I, I really want you guys to have the best benefits. And he's like completely on their side. And I said, you know, we're, we're walking out the, cr the reality that we live in. We're creating it. Let us make people in our image and let them. Th the ultimate act of creativity is the creator created creators. So stop complaining about what you don't like and create something better. Uh, it's going to be an awesome uh, week. You know, um, June is nearly half of, I mean, uh, um, 2015 is nearly half over. We're entering the sixth month of the year. You know, it's amazing. So, you know, make the most of your of your time because you have limited amount of time to to do unlimited things. So you gotta don't waste it on trivialities. Uh, come up higher. I like. I don't know whose idea it was. I guess it was Michelle. But when when uh, Marshall was singing. Just that image of that eagle flying. And that's a, that, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. That eagle just tells you that's who you are. You're not a chicken. And remember, chickens don't believe eagles exist. So when chickens want to cluck on your uh, Facebook page, you say, baby, you don't even know. You don't, e you don't even know. Uh, you know, enjoy the chicken coop. I'm going to the next level. All right? That's right. The word's up here. I love you so much. You have a blessed day. You wake up tomorrow saying, this is the, the day the Lord has created for me to make. All right? Go see uh, Jacob and give him some money. Bye.